Well, you're very welcome along, listeners, to a massive game of hur- or massive day of hurling here in FBD Semple Stadium. Two finals live on air across the next couple of hours. First up, we have the Premier Intermediate Hurling Championship final. Carrick Swan, the South Champions, taking on the West Champions, Cashel King Cormacs. So much on the line for this game. The winners, of course, will be crowned Seamus Arene Cup winners. They'll be Premier Intermediate Champions for 2024. They'll get a ticket into the Senior Championship next year, and they will also go on to represent Tipperary in the Munster Intermediate media championship to play the winners of Limerick at the start of November so plenty on the line for both Cashel King Cormacs and Carrick Swan I'm joined in the commentary box in the old stand here in FBD Semple Stadium by Ken Hogan my name is Paul Carroll and we're ready to call the action here in FBD Semple Stadium both teams out on the field James Cummins in the middle of the huddle for Cashel just giving a talk to his troops ahead of that one he's the captain of the Cashel team and likewise Eric O'Halloran standing in the middle of the uh, huddle on the 45 yard line where the Carrick Swan players are and Ken this is really set up to be a big game big crowd down below us here in the old stand nice crowd filling in the new stand over the far side as well nice conditions it's all kind of set up now yeah good good, good afternoon listeners great atmosphere here it's brilliant to see the black and white of the swan the red and green of cash coming in uh, youngsters young exuberant supporters there at the tunnel welcoming their teams out four divisions represented today Paul which means there's going to be a fine healthy crowd Conditions are almost perfect, you could say. Uh, two teams hungry for success. Uh, I promise this to be a thriller. Yeah, we'll run down through the teams in just a moment. Our referee in charge is Michael Kendi, and our sponsors here today are Martin O'Dwyer Family Butchers on Friar Street in Cashel. Almost ready to go. Big crowd down below, as you can hear them cheering on, waiting for this ball to be thrown in. We do have a couple of changes that we will go through when we get a chance, but the ball has been thrown in, and the game is underway. Cashel in their red jerseys with the white shorts, in the black jerseys with the black shorts. Eric Carrick Swan and they're on the attack straight away through Callum Lanigan. Callum Lanigan fires his team a point ahead after just 60 seconds or less. And uh, we heard the first roar of the Carrick Swan crowd down below. It's 20 seconds gone, one point to no score. And what a classy point, you know, brilliant teamwork, super uh, play, interlinked play. And Callum Lanigan, the player of the championship in South Tipperary, showing his wares in Torres. Cashel playing from right to left. Carrick Swan playing from right, or Carrick Swan playing from right to left, I should say, in towards the Klein and end. Cashel playing from left to right in towards the town end in this first half. Ball breaks into the middle of the field now, and it's hand pass back. Our first look at Gavin O'Halloran as he clears his lines now, and he spots the run down the far end of the field towards young number 13. That's Aidan Waters, breaks off his hand, and it's cleared by Con Bonner. Foot race now between David McGrath. Gavin O'Halloran and O'Halloran is going to get to this ball first play it back to his goalkeeper Kieran Lonergan does have a big puck if he wants to go that way instead he's going to drill a low ball in front of uh, Eric O'Halloran it deflects off his hurley maybe off the hurley of Owen Connolly in the middle of the field and it is going to be a line ball to a team that has plenty of talented line ball strikers one of them being Ben Mulcair who's going over to take it halfway between the 45 and 65 and uh, Mulcair has scored a sideline in this championship that was against Upper Church in the first round this would be an awful line ways away but he's a good striker of him as I said halfway between the 45 and 65 over on that new stand side of the field. Swan leading by a point to no score 90 seconds gone here number 7 on his back gets a good strike and it going in around the square it's just going to tail off wide though. Running down through the Cashel team Johnny Walsh in goals Con Bonner Nathan Ryan and Kieran O'Dwyer in a full back line Captain James Cummins is 5 with Connor O'Dwyer and Ronan Connolly in the half back line Paddy Fahey partners Owen Connolly in midfield and uh, just as the action continues a block down in front of us and it's Kieran O'Dwyer breaking onto it to flex off his Hurley and it's a shoulder uh, gone into him there by Dean Fitzgerald Walsh and it's a line ball in for Carrick Swan again the half forward line for Cashel today Kyle Quinn Devin Ryan and Ushin O'Donoghue with David McGrath uh, Anthony Walsh is in in place of Ger Brown and Ross Bonner is uh, number 15 Carrick Swan line out with Kieran Lonergan in, in goals Dean Kiley Scott Hogan and Jack Murphy in the full back line Gavin O'Halloran is 6 with Colin Luckman and Ben Mulcair either side with Aaron O'Halloran and Shane Torpy in midfield as we watch Gavin O'Halloran hit a good line ball dangerous in around the edge of the square well shepherded out by the Cashel defence they knew that one was going wide Eric O'Halloran the captain for Swan is 10 Callum Lanigan is 11 and Dean Fitzgerald Walsh is in in place of Taylor Fleming. We do have Aaron O'Halloran partnered with Dean Waters in midfield for Carrick Swan. And then the full forward line, Aidan Waters, Aaron Dunn and Callum Walsh. Here's Gavin O'Halloran though breaking onto a ball. He might have a pop from distance. Doesn't get the cleanest of strikes but it's a dangerous ball and a good first touch for goalkeeper Johnny Walsh. Catches it in his right hand. Goes long back down the field right in front of the tunnel. It's batted down there by Ben Mulcair. Kept in play by Dean Fitzgerald Walsh but Callum Lanigan just failed to get it off the surface. A line ball out coming for Owen Connolly of Cashel King Cormac. Good start to this game, though, Ken, from Carrick's one. 
Good start. No sign of nerves. You know, Cashel getting it hard to get into the game, but TJ has the arms folded. He knows it will set it into the game at some stage, but two wides already by two half-backs for Carrick Swans. They're attacking and they're going through the motions of taking on this fancied Cashel team. Oh, brilliant line ball from Owen Connolly. Goes 70, 80 yards down the field. Deflects off the hurley of David McGrath towards Scott Hogan of Carrick Swan. And now Gavin O'Halloran finds himself in a little bit of trouble and he just tries to flick the ball out of defence. But it's gone as far as Paddy Fahey. He gets the ball flicked off him from Ben Mulcair, but he wins it back. He's such a willing runner with the ball and he puts the head down and he's a hard man to stop. And uh, he's dragged two or three men down to the ground and he's over carried. And it almost sounds like a full-time whistle roar here in Semple Stadium. The Carrick and Shore crowd have come to play this game and a huge uh, overturn there on big Paddy Fahey trying to bust through a couple of defenders and uh, between all the Carrick Swan crowd they held him up and they've won the free out Amazing links between the two teams TJ Colony was manager of Carrick Swans so he'd be quite familiar with the Carrick Swans lads you know they've great respect for him there but terrific tackling there from the rear guard Kieran Lonergan goalkeeper goes long in towards the edge of the square it breaks off a Carrick Swan hand towards Owen Connolly who's back sweeping up gives a 1-2 with James Cummins and now he clears his lines Dagnall looking for Ross Bonner 3-17 he scored in this championship and he just can't get the ball off the surface on his own 65 but Kyle Quinn is the man to come in and take it off and puts it down on his hurley he has two Carrick Swan men on him so he just has to take him on and he's still going it's knocked off his hurley by his opposite number Eric O'Halloran and out comes the Carrick Swan captain he's going to have a goal from the 65 out near the sideline it's dropping short again and it's going to tail wide so a couple of maybe uh, loose wides there from Carrick Swan they're not really capitalising on this early advantage five minutes gone yeah, one point they have no savage score. momentum they're fl- absolutely flying they're tearing into everything but uh, they've had three wides now in, a, in the space of a couple of minutes Puck out goes short to Con Bonner he goes long down the line towards Ross Bonner but gave him absolutely no chance as it flew out over the sideline underneath the new stand so it's going to be another line ball out for Carrick Swan so fast start to this game in terms of action on the field, but not so much on the scoreboard. Just still one point to no score. Callum Lanigan with the point from play for Carrick Swan after 20 seconds of play. Ben Mulcair now preparing for his second line ball of the day. This time he's well back inside his own half, halfway between his own 45 and 65 underneath the new stand. Swan playing from right to left as we look out on a dry Semple Stadium sod as that ball is cut in field across the centre forward position where Callum Lanigan is there. It does brilliantly to gather the ball and he just ends up throwing it I think as he was slipping. It is going to be a free out uh, for Cashel King Cormacks and maybe a chance for possibly Owen Connolly to have a goal uh, on his own 65. Central position, he's been really, really good this year, Ken Owen Connolly. Yeah, he's been the talisman and he still is. He's, uh, he's actually, win- after winning a few vital balls there already for Cashel, excellent striker this can settle Cashel the need to settle down it looks like a three or four points game at the moment but it's only a one point to no score yeah this would level it up now central position about a yard inside his own 65 as he's rising it a yard in outside it as he's striking he strikes it high umpire can tell that that's gone wide and wide by a bit of a distance for a striker the ability of Owen Connolly there is a bit of a breeze yeah. blowing down in towards the Klein and end so Carrick Swan are playing with that in this first half Looked like he forced it all right, didn't he? Yeah, and short one, two puck out between fullback and goalkeeper, and Lonergan launches this one long down to the far 21 yard line, bounces off a hand and almost into the hands of Callum Walsh. Con Bonner does well to just burst out with that ball and win himself a free out. So, a bit of a dangerous moment there for the Cashel defenders as Callum Walsh almost got that ball in his possession. Conley now drives a ball down the field low in front of Ross Bonner. He's out in front of his man, but he just couldn't get his touch, and instead the break goes to Gavin O'Halloran, plays a ball across his own wing back line looking for number five there Conlon Luckman he's been overturned by Ronan Connolly Connolly now trying to break through a couple of tackles plays it back towards Carl Quinn an advantage is being played and uh, Carl Quinn maybe a little bit upset he didn't get the shot away but good work there between himself and Ronan Connolly and this will give our first look really at Devin Ryan who's been another brilliant player in this championship for Cashel 237 he has in the championship so far as he's coming out uh, to take this three halfway between the 45 and 65 oh, both uh, player teams playing a plus one uh, because and it seems to be suiting Carrick Swans at the moment because they're doing the attack and they're, they're very athletic moving with the ball Roland Connolly's getting into the game now he's a vital uh, player for Cashel if he's in the game it means they're winning quality ball so here's Devin Ryan his first free hits it incredibly high way over the back of the net but more importantly for Cashel it's over the bar and their first score comes after seven and a half minutes and it's from the free from Devin Ryan there so a point apiece eight minutes gone as we look now to our right-hand side, down into the town end goals, here is Kieran Lonergan. 
White jersey, white helmet, launches another puck out. High, extremely high, nearly all the way down to the far 21-yard line. Owen Connolly opts to swing at the ball in the air and it breaks off to Anthony Walsh, who's in the half-back line. Plays it back to Con Bonner and here's Conor O'Dwyer. Under a little bit of pressure, breaks the tackle, is playing with an advantage. Going to drive it long in towards David McGrath. McGrath now lets the ball break in behind. It does fall for Paddy Fay. The whistle is gone, though, and uh, Paddy Fay not aware. He's still going. He thinks he's going to get a point, but uh, it's going to come back for a free earlier in the play. There was an advantage. It did break in behind David McGrath, and uh, Paddy Fay still not sure if he's aware that it's going to be a free down the other end of the field. But uh, he is a threat, the big number eight. He's gone into that full forward line, but it's going to come all the way back for that earlier free. Yeah, Michael Kennedy, an experienced performer uh, at this level, has refereed underage finals, minor 21, outstanding ref, so he's totally in control of what's going on here. So all the way back inside his own 45, his own Connolly, he's going to drill it low now. Lovely ball in front of us, you know, don't know. We haven't said his name yet. Oh, and he just loses his touch and skids out over the line. So not a good first touch for the youngster, but what a performance he put in in extra time against Upper Church, scoring those two goals, winning the penalty. I'm sure uh, Cashel will like to see him get into this game as it continues on. Yeah, and, you know, chances are at a premium at the moment for Cashel because that back line for Carrick Swans are, you know, really covering off, sweeping off, and again, giving their forwards opportunity to go into space. Yeah, again, this is the second time we've seen that. We saw it with Owen Connolly, now we've seen it with Gavin O'Haller and the ball just uh, falling off the little mound they've built for the line ball, but instead it's Dean Waters now trying to get on this ball in the middle of the field. Hand passes it away, but Oshino Dunne, who's in a foot race there with Gavin O'Halloran, or Aaron O'Halloran, Eric O'Halloran even, and they've kicked the ball out of the ruck, and out comes Swan with it once more through Colin Luckman, breaks through a couple of tackles, loses his footing, play on, says referee Michael Kendi. Ruck ball forms halfway between the 265, still a point apiece, exactly 10 minutes gone. Here's Aaron O'Halloran full back on the Tipperary under 20s this year and he goes back now towards Dean Waters he's going to have a goal between halfway between the 265s hits it well and smashes it high over the bar for Dean Waters and Swan go back into a one point lead with a brilliant shot from distance there by their midfielder and it's no less than the deserves they're dominating the game so far Cash struggling to get into it Cahill Quinn on the ball now yeah a nice short puck out there to Con Bonner to Cahill Quinn and now to Owen Connolly halfway between the 265s gives a 1-2 to Oshin O'Donoghue he's going to continue his run Owen Connolly up to the 45 now striking this off the back foot hits it high across the face of the goals and wide it goes there but a great move up the field just a pity that Cashel couldn't uh, convert that chance yeah and Cashel seemed dependent there I felt that O'Sheen should have made his own run there they seemed very dependent on Owen Connolly and Owen can't do everything and that ball seemed narrowly wide it was a yeah. great, great effort from Owen Connolly yeah O'Sheen O'Donoghue maybe had a little bit more space than he thought yeah. but instead he just popped the hand pass back to Owen Connolly who continued his run so puck out to come now from Kieran Lonergan and again, he's going long. He's looking for Erica Haller and the captain of this team. He's been marshaled though by Kyle Quinn. And Kyle Quinn knocks it down to himself and then plays it forward to Ronan Connolly. Tests his touch out and thrown himself into that tackle. There was number four, Jack Murphy. The ball is on the 65-yard line of uh, the Carrick Swan defensive side of the field just down in front of us. And it breaks now to Callum Lanigan. Lovely take. Flicks it over the head of a challenger. Erica Haller and finds himself in a bit of space. He's going to have a shot from distance. But a real hit and hope job from Erica Haller and didn't even look at the post. And uh, some ill-advised shooting here from Carrick Swan early on. They still yeah, lead that, two points to one. That's Eric's second wide, and he, he should be feeding his forward line because Callum Lanning and those guys up front are... They, when they turn on the burners, I tell you, they're hard to stop. Oh, big shoulder goes in on <laughs> Dean Fitzgerald Walsh over there from Paddy Fahey. Carrick Swan retained possession and played forward now towards Aaron Dunn. First time we've really said his name. He's going to have a goal from distance. It's going to land in around the edge of the square on top of goalkeeper Johnny Walsh. And he's done well again. Caught that ball in his midriff and hand passes it out the field towards Conor DeWire. Here again is Owen Connolly breaks through a couple of tackles. Tries to hand pass it away. He's overturned and a heavy shoulder goes in onto the head of Aidan Waters at Kem from Conor O'Dwyer just as Aidan Waters was going down over the ball it was a frontal kind of shoulder from Conor O'Dwyer right under the nose of referee Michael Kendi so it's going to be a free in from the 45 yard line and a chance for Carrick Swan now Ken to get their first score in 12 minutes they scored after 20 seconds and uh, they haven't got one since and Carrick are really physical they're really up front uh, they know what they're about they're moving very fast around the pitch uh, they're switching interchanging their 14 Aaron Dunn 
Callum Lanigan interchange so they know what they're about and they also have a great puck out strategy which is upsetting the casual strong uh, spine of Owen Connolly Connor Dwyer and co you can see Owen Connolly just shepherding down to his teammates to get up for this game now as Callum Lanigan on the 45 launches that ball way over the back of the out over the back of the stand but over the bar it goes from Callum Lanigan he was making sure that one had the distance so two points apiece now we've 13 minutes played sorry three points to one I should say in favour of Carrick Swan and uh, I'm not sure if that scoreboard is right. Yeah, it is right. So puck out goes long. And uh, now it's broken down towards a Carrick Swan man. And it's Gavin O'Halloran going to clear his lines in front of Aiden Waters. Now far into the field. Looks like he was tripped from behind by Con Bonner. Referee disagrees. Play on. Young Kieran O'Dwyer brings this ball out. And Ronan Connolly cleverly spots the ball 60 yards back the field to the free Con O'Dwyer. They're working it well now to Cahill Quinn. He plays it down the line towards James Cummins. Poor touch from him, but he might be able to get onto his own break. And he does, and he does really well. Now he's trying to shake off the tackle of Ben Mulcair. He's going to shoot from the sideline. No, he's going to play it into the full forward line. That's a perfect ball for Devin Ryan. Oh, what a goal for Cashel King Cormac's Devin Ryan on the end of it. James Cummins fires a ball 30 yards across the field into the stride of Devin Ryan. One-on-one with the goalkeeper. Fires it low into the back of the net. 1-1 playing three points. What a goal, Ken. And a very patient build-up, you know, between Cahill Crane and the lads pushing it through. And a super ball from Jamie Cummins, you know, that was a great pass. And who do you want, you know, catching that ball 10 yards out? Devin Ryan, tremendous goal. He didn't have to break his stride at all. Straight into his hand inside the 14 on the run. Buried it low past Kieran Lonergan. Nothing the goalie could do. And now Cashel in the lead. 1-1 playing three points. But Gavin O'Halloran in possession for the Swan. Plays it into the full forward line looking for Callum Walsh. Again, he's been marshaled back there by Nathan Ryan. The Carrick Swan crowd want to free. There's another shoulder gone in there. And the Carrick Swan crowd very vocal down below us. But out comes Ronan Connolly for Cashel flicking it into the full forward line but he really didn't look as he was hitting it because he's hit it straight towards Gavin O'Halloran he has time now to look down the field looks like he wants to launch it down on top of Aidan Waters Dean Fitzgerald Walsh still down injured for Carrick Swan as this ball breaks in towards Callum Walsh he's coming out the field now and he's chopped from behind by Con Bonner and it is going to be a free out no sorry that was Nathan Ryan that time and Nathan Ryan got away with the tackle down here in front of us as well and Michael Kennedy will have his eye now on Nathan Ryan because um, you could see there was intent in that strike going yeah. across the pitch and, and Michael Kennedy saw it but um, I felt Carrick Swans were a little bit to be fair hard done by with that tackle there and the third man tackle immediately afterwards so um, Nathan Ryan lucky he's not going into the book yeah, but, he but was... he's an experienced campaigner too he'll know uh, I, I, I've tried it out now at this stage I won't get away with that again he was skating on tin ice in the uh, <laughs> semi-final as well he got a yellow card early on no, but, nonsense, uh, no nonsense full back ball. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Callum Lanigan looking for his third point of the game and he's got it so he fires over that free for Carrick Swan so four points playing a 1-1 and uh, we've a level game, 15 and a half minutes gone. Coverage here on Tip FM with thanks to Martin O'Dwyer, Family Butchers, Friar Street in Cashel. Ball goes long, but uh, Carrick Swan onto the now in the full forward line as it's Callum Walsh looking for his first score. He's off balance and he's fired it over the bar nonetheless though. And it's Callum Walsh's first score this final. And uh, they fly back into a one-point lead, five points playing 1-1. Yeah, beautiful score off his left there. I'm impressed with the movement of that forward line. Um, if they can get their shooting right... Oh, oh, almost a perfect puck out there from Jonathan Walsh halfway between the 265s he was looking for uh, Cahill Quinn over on that sideline but it was just about a foot over Cahill Quinn's head he couldn't uh, keep his body in play to try and catch the ball so there's going to be a line ball out once again for Ben Mulcair directly halfway between the 265s underneath the Art Corla over there in front of the new stand where the Seamus Arena Cup is situated ready to be lifted by either Cahill, either Eric O'Halloran I should say or James Cummins after it about 60 minutes lovely line ball from Ben Mulcair going to land in around the edge of the square might be too much on it though and it's just gone wide there Aidan Waters couldn't keep it in play so Carrick Swan have had a lot of possession Ken but still just the five points they lead by one but they feel like they're one yeah, more yeah he's obviously a line ball specialist uh, Ben Mulcair but that's two now wide you know it's like Joe Canning in his heyday you know if it went over to look brilliant but then when it went wide it was, it was a wasted opportunity <laughs> he's know? going to get another go now it's after going <laughs> off the hurley of Paddy Fahey over there from the puck out so might um, land the danger area this time yeah he's uh, exactly the exact same spot where he was the last time so halfway between the 265s so I think uh, Aaron Dunn is just pointing at Callum Walsh and Aidan Waters to go either side of the post and be ready for this one to drop in around the square maybe he got a brilliant strike on this last one so let's see can he get something similar 
Number seven on his back. It's another good one. It's going to land in around the 21-yard line on top of Aaron Dunn. Breaks off the hand of Anthony Walsh and Connor Dwyer. Strong in possession. Comes out. Wins a free play on, says referee. Advantage being played as Ronan Connolly. Just guilty of taking too much out of the ball. And uh, cleverly flicks it away towards Kyle Quinn. His out ball now is looking in towards Dave McGrand, the full forward line. He opts with the hurley. And he's pushed over from behind, I think, by Scott Hogan. And it is going to be a free in for Devin Ryan halfway between the 45 and 65 straight in front of the goals. Chance for Devin Ryan to come out now and take this one again. And literally, you know, Cashel are working on scraps. Yeah. And um, they're very conscious of the breeze, I'd say. Uh, TJ is conscious of we don't want to concede leads because the irony playing three up front. Uh, this will be the second free for Aaron Ryan. He'll be the only scorer. If I'm Devin correct. Ryan, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's got the goal and point. He scores this, so that goal has kept him in the hunt. So this would level things up again in FBD Semple Stadium, just outside the 45 central position. Umpire having a look at it, and uh, they are going to nod that it's gone over the bar. So uh, over the bar it goes from Devin Ryan. 1 2 for him, 1 2 for Cashel, playing the five points of Carrick Swan. 18 and a half gone in this first half. Kieran Lonergan drills a puck out in front of Aaron Dunn, halfway between the 265s, but Ronan Connolly is onto the breaking ball. His influence starting to grow as his ball for Con- Ross Bonner is cut out there by Ben Mulcair. And now Eric O'Halloran going to have a shot from distance. It's another one, though, that's landing harmlessly wide. And Carrick Swan, Ken, are really going to be kicking themselves as this game is close coming down the stretch. That's a lot of wides in this first Six, half. seven wides I make it at this stage, you know. And there's only, there's only uh, 19 minutes gone. Yeah, and they need to maybe feed their full forward line a little bit more as Conor Dwyer just works this short puck out out of the full back line and plays it back to the corner back that's Con Bonner he's going long looking for Paddy Fahey up with the hand he goes and down with the ball he comes and he hand passes it forward and he had the hurley pulled out of his hand there by number four Jack Murphy but Paddy Fahey as uh, Carl Quinn described him one of the best athletes he's ever played with and he's a big strong man good runner with the ball good in the air and he wins a vital free there for Cashel now who have a chance to fire back into the lead he's such an important cog in that machine uh, Paddy Fahey because you'd love to have him on any team uh, his ball winning ability his selfless approach you know to win the ball and give the passes and uh, funny enough Devon is not taking this he's oh interesting a, oh, oh. oh nice short one there from Owen Connolly towards Devon Ryan but it really broke down and uh, it was curious enough that Owen Connolly was coming over to take that free inside the 65 but he obviously had something worked with Devon Ryan that when he came over to take it Devon Ryan would run out to the side and try and get a short ball but it said it went over the head uh, went over the head of uh, Devon Ryan and it's now going to be a free out for Carrick Swan so it's Callum Lanigan now all the way back inside his own uh, 65 yard line halfway between his own 65 and 45 and uh, he's trying to get Paddy Fahey to maybe go back a couple of yards, but this now to put Carrick Swan back in the lead. 20 and a half minutes gone in FBD Semple Stadium. Lanigan now gets a good strike on it. It's going to have the distance, and that looks accurate from here. What a score from Callum Lanigan. The young man has got his fourth point of the day, just 19 years old, and uh, Swan back into the lead by one. Yeah, great score from Lanigan. And, you know, at the moment, they deserve to be up by a pint. It's low scoring, you know, at the moment, but things will eat it up. Cashel making things hard for themselves, trying to work that ball out from the short puck out. Anthony Walsh has been overturned on his own 45-yard line, and it's that man again, Callum Lanigan, who comes out of the ruck with the ball. He's won a free. Dean Fitzgerald Walsh going to continue the advantage. It is going to come back, though. Eric O'Halloran had got it from a difficult angle, so it's a chance now for Callum Lanigan to fire over another one. Central position inside the 45, but Cashel making things hard for themselves, Ken. I know it's cold out there. Maybe hands are a little bit cold, trying to work the ball out, and you could see TJ Connolly just ushering to the team to uh, move the ball down the field, so they're doing a little bit of overplaying the ball in their own full back line. And the one ball Eric O'Halloran scored, you know, which is a great, <laughs> yeah. great fill up to him. Uh, the, the umpire signaled the point, but it, it, in fairness to Michael Kennedy, he had allowed it. He allowed the change, and now uh, I think Michael is saying, Nathan, I think uh, that's your quota for today. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Nathan having a good chat there with Michael Kendi, so they're working it out between them. I think they've agreed to leave off this one, but here's Callum Lanigan inside the 45, off his left hand side. That's five now for him to add to his 132 in this championship he had coming in today. So he's up to the 40 point mark in total for his championship campaign. But more importantly, here after 22 minutes, seven points playing 1 2. Swan in the lead. Another puck out goes short and now gets it off to Owen Connolly. He flicks it into the centre forward position where Ross Bonner finally has it in his hand. He dribbled and knocked the first few and now he's going on a run. Flicks it over a man's head. He's still going. He's inside the 45. Looking for the point. Ross Bonner 
It's going to land into the hands of the goalkeeper, Kieran Lonergan, who had to do really well to uh, avoid the hurley there. Uh, was it Devin Ryan trying to distract him as that ball was landing? And it's gone out for a lying ball over on that far side of the field. Great run from Ross Bonner, but just couldn't have get the juice on that strike to get it over the crossbar. And he hadn't the support either. If, you know, usually with the Bonners, when they run like that, you should have someone on your shoulder to pop the pass and finish the score. But he had to do it all on his own. And that's twice now balls have lobbed short. There is a, you know, there is a breeze there. And uh, here's Ben Mulcair, another great line ball. This one goes 80, 90 yards down the field, but Conor Dwyer is wise to it there from a casual point of view. Here's Owen Connolly, halfway between the 265s, shot from distance. Oh, incredibly accurate from Owen Connolly. Fires his o- over his first score of the day. Seven points for the Swan. 1-3 now for Cashel King Cormacks. Back to a one-point game. Brilliant strike there from Owen Connolly. And that's the man you want, you know, with the ball in the hand. Super pass though from Conor Dwyer. That's the type of support play you need. Kieran Lonergan now in the town end goal. Slips as he's striking that puck out, but it's a nice one in front of Eric O'Halloran. Up with the hand he goes, but Kyle Quinn again is the man to knock it off as Hurley. Kyle Quinn's going to continue his run now. He's going to have a shot from distance, looking to level things up. Kyle Quinn, he's not got it. It's Ooh. just gone wide across the face of the goals from Kyle Quinn, but he's hurling well back there. Puck out to come from Kieran Lonergan again. Has his uh, feet firmly below him as he puts it in front of Aaron Dunn. Breaks off him towards Kyle Quinn again between the 265s. Hand passes it infield towards Paddy Fahey. His hand pass goes back now to O'Dwyer. Drills it low down in front of Devin Ryan. Goes in over his head though. And Gavin O'Halloran is sweeping up for this one. He might go back to his goalkeeper and he does. And it's all the way back to Kieran Lonergan. Takes a bit of a loose touch. He's under a little bit of pressure. But gets it away oh. to no one, only a cashel man. And Ross Bonner can't get his touch once more. But in to help him out is Oshin O'Donoghue. And Oshin O'Donoghue is on the run looking for his first score of the game. And Oshin O'Donoghue makes no mistake about it. A bit of an unforced error back there from Kieran Lonergan. But the side's level, 24 and a half minutes gone. 1-4 for Cashel now, 7 for this one. Amazing how things work out. Uh, you know, Ross Bonner spilled the ball. Oshin O'Donoghue now is after getting a score. Himself and Owen Connolly, two last scores. They're important men to have on the ball. That gives them the extra bit of uh, confidence to go again. Kieran Lonergan launches another puck out down long. It finally breaks towards Aaron Dunn. He's going to have a shot from inside the 45. He hits it high and he fires over his first score of the day. Number 14, Aaron Dunn fires Carrick back into a one-point lead here with five minutes to go in this first half. Great score, great score. Puck out short now towards the right corner back. That's Con Bonner down below us with the long red sleeves on and he hand passes it forward towards Owen Connolly. Connolly now right on the sideline and he's run out of room down there and it is going to be a line ball for Carrick Swan as Devin Ryan is knocked over uh, down the far end of the field trying to keep that ball in play. But uh, Owen Connolly just uh, maybe a little bit too, uh, too slow in possession maybe or a little bit too patient looking for options to open up downfield and he ended up just taking it out over the sideline and it's going to give Gavin O'Halloran a chance now to tee up this ball and take this sideline right in front of the tunnel here in Semple Stadium. He's looking for his Callum Walsh to go in towards the edge of the square and he hits it right there towards the edge of the square. What a ball that is and Callum Walsh puts up with the hand knocks off his hand though down towards Owen Connolly it's still there. Connolly just has to hack it out at the danger area. Aaron Dunn is onto it now Dunn now off his left, trying to f- scoop it over the bar, and oh. he's done brilliantly. Aaron Dunn, his second point, his second in a row, and Swan leading by two now, nine points to 1 4, 26 gone. And that was a four uh, versus one scenario with Cashew. They had four backs there, and they scooped it out. That should never have happened. They should have, they should have won primary possession there, Paul. A puck out goes long on top of Paddy Fahey, and he has it again, but he throws it forward, and I think he knows himself. He's looking towards the referee, Michael Kendi, but it was right in front of him. And uh, just an unforced error there from Paddy Fahey, who had done so well to win that ball originally from the puck out, trying to find Ronan Connolly with a hand pass. But it's a foul throw or a throw ball, and now it is going to be a free in for Callum Lanigan. He's just about three, four yards inside his own 65, but it is a central position. We saw him score one from a bit further back earlier in the half, but this will give him a three-point lead. As he strikes it well, is it accurate? It looks accurate from here. Maybe, is it? Umpires, yes, it is over the bar from Callum Lanigan. And that is his sixth score of the day. Ken, I mentioned when they were warming up, I said it's going to be an important day for Callum Lanigan down there on the freeze. And he's uh, the perfect six out of six so far. 
brilliant striking from Callum. Puck out goes short towards young Kieran O'Dwyer. He goes long down the line towards Devin Ryan. It beats in behind him and now back towards Gavin O'Halloran who's going to go across his own 14 towards goalkeeper Kieran Lonergan. He's got all the time in the world now to survey his options and now open up the shoulders and drive this ball long, diagonal, down to the far 21-yard line. Young Callum Walsh is there, knocked off his hurley by Nathan Ryan. But now with that hand pass out by Kieran O'Dwyer is loose and Nathan Ryan, I think, just that's one too many. We've mentioned his name a couple of times. He just can't help himself. The ball was there, just a loose one-handed flick and he's eventually going to go into the book there and uh, I don't think Kenny can have any complaints at this stage. No complaints whatsoever because even the first one with the one hand overhead was questionable as well. Yeah. And Michael Kennedy's too experienced a referee not to know that uh, so Nathan needs to be careful now because... If that was needless too as well. Like, yeah. you know, the player going out towards the sideline and it's going to give Callum Lanigan another chance now. This time it's about five yards in from the 45 and about seven or eight yards in from the sideline. So... Uh, not the easiest freeze, but he's been striking him well so far. The young man still under 20 next year. So I'm sure Brendan Cummins will be uh, maybe having a word with Callum Lanigan after the season he's had so far. But here he is now behind this ball. He strikes him off his left, strikes it brilliantly, drills it over the bar. Does Callum Lanigan high, but so powerfully. And now 11 points for Carrick Swan, 1 4 for Cashel. 28 and a half minutes gone. Swan leading by four. Puck out goes long from Johnny Walsh. He's looking for Kyle Quinn. Up with the hand goes Kyle Quinn. It breaks off him towards James Cummins. Cummins now looks in field and drills it low towards Conor O'Dwyer. Can't quite get his touch, but now he has it into his possession. Lovely uh, offhand hand pass towards Ross Bonner. It could open up now for Cashel. Bonner's going to take his point, though, and drives that over the bar. But a good move from Cashel. Good hand pass there from Conor O'Dwyer to open things up for Ross Bonner to fire over his first of the day. Yeah, Kyle Quinn was making an amazing run right through the middle there, and if it had been given to him, it was a huge goal opportunity, but Ross, of course, hasn't had his account opened yet, and he, I suppose he just needed to score that point to get himself into the game. Yeah, so 1-5 for Cashel now, 11 for Carrick Swan. They lead by three, the South Champions, as they go long now. Oh, and down from the puck out, down on top of uh, Dean Fitzgerald. Walsh breaks off him, though, towards Oshin O'Donoghue, who's just dropped back a little bit, and now he hand passes it back towards Conor Dwyer, who fires it long, looking for Paddy Fahey. Gavin O'Halloran is in there, brilliantly kicks the ball out of the ruck. Might have paid for it, though, with a little bit of a knock into the stomach, but Eric O'Halloran has it in his possession, and uh, his pass back is loose now, and Paddy Fahey is broken onto it. Paddy Fahey now trying to open things up, but he just loses the ball in possession and uh, trying to take on Scott Hogan. Loses it in possession now. Eric O'Halloran is going to have a goal from distance and it's going to land down on top of young Callum Walsh. Breaks off Nathan Ryan now, who has to be careful. Callum Walsh has it out in front from now, but he's stuck out on the sideline, 21 yards from goals. 21 yards from the end line. Puts it back down in his hurley. Still going now, trying to strike it off. He's blocked down brilliantly by Nathan Ryan, but only as far as Aiden Waters. He's blocked down brilliantly by Nathan Ryan back there and flicks it forward. No, it was Con Bonner with the block down. He gets it away to Kyle Quinn, halfway between the two 65s. He's trying to take on his man, forced to go backwards. Anthony was from distance, off his left, landing in around the 21-yard line. Nathan Ryan, Devin Ryan, I should say, waiting for the break. It never came. Instead, it's gone towards Colin Luckman now of Carrick Swan. He's tripped by David McGrath who puts his hand up in apology to the referee. And it is going to be a free out for Carrick Swan, but a hectic uh, passage of play there, Ken. We're into the additional 60 uh, seconds that we're going to have in this first half, and it's going to be a free out. And uh, I'm not sure if Callum Lanigan has come all the way back to his own 45 for this one, but Carrick Swan have finished the half strong, and they're going to win with a lead. So what last throw the dice now for one last poke, so he might as well. Um, Really physical Carrick Swan's fast and hard. And TJ is beginning to get a little bit of rage with the work rate of the forward line. He's demanding more from the charges. So here is Callum Lanigan, a yard or two inside his own 45, an awful long ways from the Kalina and end goals. He strikes it well, though, strikes it high. It's going to be landing in around the edge of the square dangerously. Up with the hand goes Owen Connolly, and he comes down with the ball. Brilliant piece of fielding there by the Cashel number nine. But Michael Kendi blows the halftime whistle, and it's the South Champions, Carrick Swan, with a three-point lead, 11 points playing 1-5. And Ken, they definitely deserve that three-point lead. Yeah, without a doubt, you know, uh, Cashel are maybe flattered only to be going three down. Um, from my point of view, Carrick Swans have been the form team. We're not seeing enough of the marquee players, the Cashels, Roland Connolly, Ross Bonner has opened his account, Oshin Dunho, uh, Devin Ryan has kept him in the game with that brilliant goal. Uh, Paddy Fahey winning hard ball, but they're, they're, this story today... Uh, particularly up to halftime, it's about Callum Lanigan, 
Joe Halloran's absolutely outstanding. Backline, very good. Keir Nottigan's distribution, good. Some great scores from Aaron Dunn as well. So from that point of view, I think uh, Carrick will be happy the way they're playing. Cashel will be disappointed. But it's only a three-point game, and as you mentioned, the breeze probably will be with uh, King Cormac's in the second half. Yeah, one of the great features of county final day is, of course, the Sean Tracy pipe band, and they're after making their way onto the fields to bring a bit of sound uh, to what is a colourful day with a lot of uh, different colours out there between the Carrick Swan colours and Cashel King Cormac colours, and don't forget Tomb and a lot more to come at 3.45. But it is Carrick Swan in the lead at half time of this Premier Intermediate hurling final. They lead 11 points to 1 5. We're going to take a quick ad break. We'll be back with half time analysis after these. Tip FM's live coverage of the FBD Insurance County Tipperary Premier Intermediate Hurling Championship in association with Martin O'Dwyer Family Butchers. Treat yourself to something fresh and delicious at the hot and cold deli counter in store at Friar Street Cashel. And you're very welcome back to FBD Semple Stadium. Paul Carroll with Ken Hogan alongside me. It is half time of the Premier Intermediate Hurling Championship final. And it is Carrick Swan with a three point lead, 11 points to 1 5. And uh, they're winning uh, this first half. Sorry, myself and Ken are just enjoying some uh, half time confectionaries here. <laughs> so we're just getting Conference our. Conference of FBD. <laughs> <laughs> so it is half time. Carrick Swan leading 11 points to 1 5. And Ken. The game started quite slow. There was only one score after the first 10 minutes. But then that goal for Cashel probably we thought would settle them down. It came from Devon Ryan. A brilliant ball in from James Cummins. Devon Ryan on the run inside the 14. Lettered it past the goalkeeper. But Carrick Swan have been the much better team in that first half. And they rightfully have a, have a three-point lead. Uh, without a doubt, I think the three-point lead doesn't flatter them in any way. Uh, they have controlled the game for most parts. Um, have had a number of wides seven if we I think we make it but also uh, their sideline uh, cut expertise is very good mm. but unfortunately a couple of them have gone astray and gone wide through Eric O'Halloran and also through Ben Mulcair but uh, overall I'm impressed with their movement I'm impressed with their physicality they're not standing back from Cashel and they know Cashel have players of reputation but every ball is hard won and even though Simple Stadium is a big pitch uh, both teams playing a plus one which makes it difficult for the forward line to get into and definitely Cashel's forward line they have come in uh, fits and spurts Devin Ryan's goal has kept him really in the game uh, Paul yeah because it has been all Carrick Swan and we kind of thought for periods of that first half that they weren't going to uh, put their dominance on the scoreboard let's say they're only a point or two ahead for large parts but they've stretched it out to three at the half seven first half points for Callum Lanigan two from play from Aaron Dunn and Callum Walsh and Dean Waters have also chipped in for a point. For Cashel, uh, their points have come from Owen Connolly, Oshin O'Donoghue and Ross Bonner. And then 1-2 from Devin Ryan with that brilliant goal set up from a lovely crossfield ball from James Cummins. But, Ken, I suppose the fear for Cashel coming in here today was they are a young team. They've still got a lot of young players. And it feels like a lot of them just haven't gotten into the game. There's a lot of players there where you're still waiting for them to get their first proper possession of the ball and settle into the game. And it just feels like they haven't quite settled into this final yet. Yeah, I think I dispute the fact that they're that young. You know, I mean, Callum Lanigan is only 19 years of age uh, at the other side. Yeah. These, they, you know, this casual team has been on the road a while. They're, they have enough experienced performances to carry the younger fellas through. The younger fellas, in actual fact, are doing quite well. But mm. it's just the fact that, that Ross Bonner, Ocean, and Donahue, they have come with a couple of points before half time. But we just haven't seen enough of these players. Now, Gerald Brown, of course, an All Ireland senior hurling medalist, is on the side. And he came in the last day and got a goal. He didn't probably impress, but still he has that X factor. He knows where the goals are and I'm sure they're very tempted at this stage to introduce him the thing about it is when do you introduce him at, at the right time at, uh, for the second half or into the second half but TJ has been patient so far but I can tell you um, there will be the hair dryer treatment I would suspect I'm at sh- half time because Cashel are barely hanging in and are fortunate in a sense that last ball that Callum Lanning went in great catch from Owen Connolly Owen Connolly still the one that's that Cashel are looking to, to carry him through but he, it's not, it can't be a one man show everybody else has to churn in with you know work rate and above all do something for the team that will make things happen in the second half Kieran Reid the Carrick Swan manager I'm sure he probably a little bit upset down below is in the old stand dressing rooms at the moment because his team did hit a lot of needless wides and kind of hit and hope shots from around the middle of the field and they're winning by three points at half time but they probably feel like they should be up by more 
Yeah, it probably should, but but he'd be delighted with their performance, though. I mean, they mm. are playing, and like Jerry looked down, you say, you know, take the shots, take the shots. If you're taking the shots, you're getting the opportunities. The scores will come. And, and it's supposed to be fair to, to, to both teams. It is a huge game. Yeah. You know, Dan Breen, uh, you know, Cup is the incentive. Do you know, to play in that with the top echelon, yeah. 16 teams, and both teams probably ha- are a little bit edgy in their striking. But I think that will improve in the second half. It's still an entertaining game, yeah. and it's all to play for. And uh, at this stage, we can't call it, Paul. No, it is. Three points in at 11 points for Carrick Swan, 1 5 for Cash Looking Cormacks. We're going to take a quick ad break back with the second half live of the Seamus Arena Cup final after these. Hello, oh, early. Yeah, both teams just out on the field, both games, or both teams just out in the field and the ball has just been thrown underway. Second half of the Seamus Arena Cup Final for 2024 is back uh, and on an underway. Carrick Swan leading by three points. They play from left to right in this second half in towards the town end. Cashel playing from right to left. No halftime substitutes from either side and Cashel have won a big free over on that far side of the field. Just about five yards in from the sideline, inside the 45. A chance for Devon Ryan coming up now to try and get Cashel back within two. So, Ken, you were just mentioning Cashel came out a little bit early. I'm sure TJ Conley <sighs> tried his best to fire them up for the second half. Yeah, Kevin and myself just said they came out with a purpose in mind. They look like this is it now. We're going at this from the very word going. They're getting an opportunity now with a fortunate free there for Devin Ryan. So, Kevin O'Halloran just having a word with referee Michael Kendi. So, it is going to be a free in now for Devin Ryan. Difficult enough angle, but looks like he's nailed it and he has got a big free there for Devin Ryan. 1 3 on the day for him. And now we're back to just a two-point game. 1-6 playing 11 points. Here's our first look at Kieran Lonergan's puck out into this breeze. Not a howling wind by any means, but a substantial one nonetheless. But he has a monstrous strike, and he's hit that high and all the way down to the fire 45. Up of the hand goes Aaron Dunn, but it's knocked down by Anthony Walsh, only as far as Lanigan, though. He's going to have another go, and Al- Callum Lanigan just can't miss today. That's his eighth score of the day off the break of the puck out fires it over the bar back to a three point game for Swan yeah great score he's the man to watch and you know even though Cash will have that plus one they're struggling to get hold of him puck out goes short to Conor Dwyer inside his own 45 drills it long and diagonal knocked out of the sky by Colin Luckman now as far as uh, Gavin O'Halloran his hand pass forward is a loose one though and it's gone as far as Ross Bonner he's trying to break through a couple of tackles plays it back to Paddy Fahey he's hooked from behind by Aaron Dunn though Fahey now on his own 65 trying to get it off the ground and away comes Carrick Swan but Owen Connolly gets a block away on the hand pass and now here's James Cummins tries to take on the tackle of Ben Mulcair he's under pressure though and he has to go long and diagonal and a good ball there towards David McGrath he can get it but Colin Lockman is down with the ball and now he looks like he's fouled by Dave McGrath and you can hear the roar of the Carrick Swan crowd down below us they are fired up for this game and they've won another big free over there through Colin Lockman yeah yeah and de- definitely Callum Lanigan is taking his time coming over uh, for a 19 year old uh, he's showing great maturity do you know he's not rushing he knows uh, time is on their side they're, they're against the breeze they have three pints and um, he'll do well to, to hit the range here, but uh, the way he's going at the moment, Paul. Yeah, bit of an angle. Out. Yeah, underneath the uh, new stand over there on his own 65. So here's Callum Lanigan, a 19 year old free taker. We're going to have another 19 year old free taker for Tumi Vara at quarter to four in the senior final. And here's Callum Lanigan now striking off his left. He's got eight points so far in this game. As he gets a brilliant strike on it, it's definitely going to have the distance. And Whoa. it has definitely got the accuracy high over the black spot from Callum Lanigan. Nine points on the day. 33 minutes gone. 13 points playing 1-6. Swan in command. Puck out to come now down the town end goals from goalkeeper Johnny Walsh. He goes long. He's looking for Ross Bonner. It's batted down strong by Ben Mulcair. And it's this man again, Lanigan. Shouldered off the ball now, but it breaks towards uh, Ben Mulcair. He tries to get a show, uh, hand pass away to Erica Halloran, but he just lost his footing. And uh, instead, it's intercepted by Cashel. The ball is hot as all the players miss it in the middle of the field. And it's Dean Waters who gets it, gets it off to Callum Lanigan. Going to have a go on his right side to this time. It's going to land in around the goals. And Johnny Walsh, good defending back there by Nathan Ryan, just to clear it away for the goalkeeper to come out and field the ball. And he touches it down to himself, plays it out to Conor Dwyer. And now Owen Connolly is going to absolutely launch one from his own 45, but it's going to go a bit of a distance wide, but an incredibly uh, powerful strike from Owen Connolly, but an inaccurate one, and it remains a four-point lead for Carrick Swan four minutes into the second half. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, will Cashel have the same uh, wides ratio for the second half, you know, going into that uh, Killian and end, because it uh, doesn't seem to be going between the post for both teams. Lonergan now in the goals for Carrick Swan. 
Goes long, central, looking for Eric O'Halloran. He bats it down to a teammate now, and Aaron O'Halloran has it. He's hooked from behind by Devin Ryan, and it's Kyle Quinn coming onto this ball. Flicks it forward towards the captain, James Cummins, out on the sideline, 50 yards from the end line, and it's another wide for Cashel King Cormacks, this time from James Cummins. And if you're in the full forward line on either team, can you be <laughs> cursing at your teammates because uh, no real uh, nice ball going in at all? Yeah, Cashel will have to make a decision at some stage, Paul, to push up. Uh, you know, they're persisting with the sweeper system. They need to push up and take a chance and push up in this Carrick Swans team. Ball now breaks off the puck out towards Colin Lockman. He's blocked down by Owen Connolly, but fortunately for him, it goes back to him now and he breaks the line of the 65. Now plays it in field towards Callum Lanigan. Tries to free his arm to get a pass away to Aaron Dunn. Dunn tries to give it back. He's hit late there by Owen Connolly, and it is going to be a free in for uh, Carrick Swan. And Cash will be disappointed with that. They had done well to make it hard for the Swan, but now we do have Swan making a substitution down below us. He featured in the first ever Seamus Arena Cup final. 16 years ago and now he's back on the field here in 2024 Danny O'Hanlon is onto the field for Carrick Swan in place of Dean Fitzgerald Walsh and uh, he's going straight to the edge of the square Ken yeah Danny knows his stuff um, he's be around the place and Dean Fitzgerald Walsh what a shift he put in there for 35 minutes he's delighted with himself and Cash Carrick are going for this now big time and there is frustration coming into the Carrick yeah. uh, to the Cash Kilcormis game as well you know a few yellow cards a few frees giving away silly so here's Lanigan now, five yards outside the 45. Bit of an angle, but it doesn't matter for him today because he's got his 10th score of the day. 14 points pl- now playing 1-6. Six. six minutes gone in the second half. Carrick Swan in command. Cashel in need of a little bit of injection of energy in this game as they go short towards Con Bonner. Drills a lovely ball down the line towards Ronan Connolly. I know it's Anthony Walsh who's going to shoot from distance. Anthony Walsh just across the face of the goals and wide. But Ken, it's all distance shooting here. They really need to get a little bit of possession in their forward line, Cashel. Yeah, and they have to. We don't see the bench empty yet, you know. And, you know, Carrick, who are playing very well, have brought in the experienced Daniel uh, Hannan. But uh, we don't see any movement in the bench yet in Cashel. So it looks like Oshin O'Donoghue has gone full forward now for Cashel in the last couple of moments. That ball is knocked down by Kyle Quinn, but only as far as Dean Waters, and the break goes back to Waters, and he gets away to Eric and the captain now on the 45, looking for it. Is it going to sneak in? It's not. It's going to go wide, and it's just not going his way in terms of shooting today. And uh, another one wide there for the Swan. 14 points playing 1-6. Puck out brilliantly directed from Johnny Walsh in towards the middle of the field towards James Cummins. His pass intended for Paddy Fahey has found its way towards Ross Bonner. He hand passes it off now towards Owen Connolly. Connolly down the line looking for James Cummins but it's intercepted by Dean Waters. He's had a fine game so far as his hand pass makes his way back towards Gavin O'Halloran. Aidan Waters now under a lot of pressure. Two young players now himself and Kieran O'Dwyer and he goes short towards Aaron O'Halloran. Halloran breaks through a couple of the tackles but loses the ball in possession to Owen Connolly. He flicks it forward now towards Oshin O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue from inside the 45. It's off the post. It's high off the post and it's landed down around the edge of the 14. Jack Murphy is there though for Carrick Swan and he does really well to retain possession and clear his lines. A lovely out ball straight into the hand of Callum Lanigan. Throws up a dummy in front of Ross Bonner. Now he takes him on. Good hook from behind by Bonner though but the ball makes its way towards Aaron Dunn. Dunn though stuck on the ground on his knees out on the sideline trying to keep it in play. Loses the ball out of his hands and now Callum Lanigan has continued his run and he's won it back. He breaks through a couple of tackles. Thinks it's a foul play on says the referee and they've won it back through Aaron Dunn Aaron Dunn on his left hand side now on his own 65 goes long towards the edge of the D up rises Conor O'Dwyer well he's shouldered to the ground by big Danny O'Hanlon illegally so says the referee and the Carrick Swan crowd are incensed they think it was shoulder to shoulder Ken it might have been shoulder to shoulder I'm not sure Conor O'Dwyer didn't see big Danny O'Hanlon coming at all but <laughs> he definitely knows he's on the field now yeah it, it fractionally probably was into the back you know uh, now Owen Connolly has a decision to make with a strong breeze. Will I go for it or will I land it short? On the edge of his own D, he's a long ways away, but he does have the aid of a bit of a breeze and he's standing over this ball like he's looking for a point. So 14 points playing 1-6. There's jeers going on down below us and whistles as he's striking. It is a good strike. It's not accurate, is it, though? Oh, and it's going to go into the back of the net. A goal for Cashel King Cormux and it's come from a long-range free from Owen Connolly, the edge of his own D, between the Carrick fullback and the goalkeeper, Kieran Lonergan, they both went up for the ball. It came off the hand of Kieran Lonergan, and Ken, it's into the back of the net just like that. And it was strange because uh, Kieran Lonergan was standing the wrong side of the goals, the wrong side of the post, so it actually went in and on his right hand side into the left hand post. 
So a very strange score, but what a boost for Cashel. And now Cashel have wind in their sails as a shot from distance is coming, and it's going to go wide there from uh, James Cummins. No, it's Ronan Connolly uh, just shooting from distance, and it's gone wide. But here's a short puck out now to Gavin O'Halloran. Carrick Swan leading by two points. A ball out to the corner, does in favour Danny O'Hanlon, and there instead is Nathan Ryan. He clears it long towards uh, James Cummins, who's just very silly shoulder into the back there from Aaron Dunn. James Cummins going nowhere, and a free clear as day for uh, Cashel King Cormacks and I think uh, Owen Connolly might be thinking about dropping this one in around the edge of the square again but such a soft goal for Carrick Swan to give up Ken yeah and so perplexed were the, the uh, you know the, the, position goal, and, the, yeah. goal, the goalkeeper in the back they were the wrong side of the ball which was a very strange one even though I know Kieran Ogner would catch the ball in his right hand now another one for Owen Connolly this one is going to have distance but it's going to just go across the face the goals is kept in play brilliantly by David McGrath Devin Ryan is there it's landing in around the edge of the square Kieran Lonergan does well to win that ball and uh, just gets a little tap in the hand as he's coming out but good goalkeeping back there by Kieran Lonergan he's going to win himself a free out for the team and uh, maybe a chance for just Carrick Swan to just take a breather now 10 minutes into this second half 14 points for Carrick Swan 2-6 for Cashel and uh, Cashel now right back in this game similar to the first half a, a goal from nothing has ended up into the back of the net and kept Cashel within touching distance here that's exactly you summed it up totally because this is totally a one-sided game and yes there's only two points in the game because of the two majors that Cashel have got so this is all to play for now and you know Carrick Swans will still have to nail a few scores to keep in front and of course we're we're moving into the you know the, the second third of the game so 41 minutes gone Kieran Lonergan goes long and it's Owen Connolly just trying to catch that ball with his right hand it breaks off and though but Kyle Quinn is onto the breaking ball he's trying to get away and Hurley is broken there but it's not Kyle Quinn's he's won the wall ball back taken on Ben Mulcahy spotted the run now of Conor O'Dwyer he crosses 65 fixed in field nice ball in front of Ushin O'Donu he has his first touch has in his possession on the 45 he's bundled oh. off the ball by Gavin O'Halloran and, and and it's a free in for Cashel King Cormacks. Really good play there by Cashel. Conor Dwyer, lovely ball in towards Ushin O'Donoghue. And the youngster, 18 years of age, done really well to win that free. And he throws the ball towards Devin Ryan. And uh, Ryan will have the chance now to reduce it to one. And, of course, you know, now Carrick Swans are under that little pressure. That was another city free. He was on his knees on the ground, Ushin O'Donoghue, and they just pushed him out over onto his back. And here's Devin Ryan now, central position on the 45. He makes no mistake about it. That's 1 4 now for the day for Devin Ryan. So back to a one point game. 42 minutes gone of the 2024 County Premier Intermediate hurling final. The crowd are getting up to it as we eat towards the last quarter of this game. Kieran Lonergan goes long down our left hand side, long and central. Big Paddy Fahey rises with the left hand, comes down with the ball eventually and flicks it forward now towards Devin Ryan. He loses his footing, flicks it back towards Owen Connolly. He's trying to take on his man, trying to take on another man, bounces off him. Ross Bonner from distance, Ross Bonner from outside the 65. Ross Bonner fires over the leveling score to a huge roar from the Cashel King Cormus crowd below us as TJ Connolly throws both hands up into the air back towards the stand. Cashel starting to believe now as Kieran Lonergan miss hits a puck out out over the sideline and it's going to be a line ball in for Cashel just outside the 45 the tide is starting to turn here Ken We're in a big way in a big way you know and the puck out's going astray now Owen Connolly you know no mean performer at line balls himself and with the look that he's had with that uh, long range goal he fancies himself to have a cut off this as well young Taylor Fleming warming up down below is ready to come on to this game for Carrick Swan not just yet though as Owen Connolly takes this line ball. Gets a brilliant strike on it. Is it accurate, though? Oh, it's just gone wide. It was about 50 yards over the back of the goals. <laughs> Huge uh, strike from the line ball from Owen Connolly, but it's gone wide. We're still level here. 43 and a half minutes gone. 14 points playing 2-8. Kieran Lonergan now just directing traffic before taking this puck out. He wants the players to go underneath us here in the old stand, and now he's launched it down to a group of three players. Up goes Callum Lanigan. It's batted down, though, by... Ronan Connolly towards James Cummins and James Cummins just took his eye off the ball momentarily and deflected it off his own Hurley out over the sideline and it's going to be a line ball in now and it's that man again Ben Mulcair ready to take it and uh, Carrick Swan ready to introduce Taylor Fleming now and it's for number 13 Aidan Waters so on comes number 12 Taylor Fleming has been dealing with injury throughout this campaign 
and uh, he's going to make his way onto the field now six points he has scored in this championship though so let's see what he can do here here's Ben Mulcair taking this line ball again another Ooh. good one in towards the edge of the square down the top of Danny O'Hanlon O'Hanlon gets a hand to it breaks off him though and it looks like it's that man again Owen Connolly onto the breaking ball flicks it out towards Ross Bonner Ross Bonner just struggling to keep this ball in play himself and Eric O'Halloran bat battling for the ball over on the far sideline Carl Quinn comes in to try and take it and it's a line ball and it's a line ball to Cashel King Cormacks who are just starting to get a little bit more to breaks 44 and a half minutes gone we're still level your coverage here on Tip FM with thanks to Martin O'Dwyer Family Butchers Friar Street in Cashel and a big shout out to Martin and Marion O'Dwyer and all the family and keeping the staff in there as well I'm sure they're cheering on Cashel as that ball goes in towards Oshin O'Donu breaks off towards Devon Ryan he spins on it sixpence and fires in Cashel into the lead 1-5 on the day now for Devon Ryan and Cashel into the lead in this game. Yeah, great score. He has the pension for scoring great uh, points. Devon, brilliant points in the semi-final as well, but that's a class score. On the 45, he spun one way, spun the other, and threw it over the bar. In the lead now are Cashel as this puck out goes long from Aaron Dunn, and it's just kept in play, is it, over there? No, it's going to be a throw-in, I think. Uh, lines man over there on that far side Kieran O'Donovan is just having a word with Michael Kendi I think they couldn't really tell exactly who's Hurley it came off there was no uh, pleading from either side really so it's been thrown in eventually and Erica Halloran the captain of Carrick Swan looking to lead his team back in this game he puts the ball down Miss Hurley he's on the edge of the D strikes it towards the goals but anything he's hitting today is just not going his way so far Eric O'Halloran and that's another wide there for Carrick Swan yeah, he's been in the game in a big way. He has done Trojan work, but he's, he's shooting. He has been way off five wides now. You'd nearly love to just see one go over the bar for him. Yeah, More yeah. than anything to get himself uh, settled. But puck out goes short and now works its way out to Con Bonner. The cornerback goes long down the line, looking for the wrong run of David McGrath. He's beaten to the ball by Scott Hogan, but he gets a touch on the ball again. Hogan now down on his knees, trying to get it off the surface. Just about 10 yards outside his own 45. A couple of teammates coming in there now for Carrick Swan. Michael Kennedy's seen enough. He's going to throw it in. So we're 46 and a half minutes gone. Cashel leading 2-9 to 14 points. And a dry, windy, but very cold Semple Stadium as that ball is thrown in. I've never seen someone trying to just pick the ball in from the throw-in, but the break goes off towards Devin Ryan. He breaks the tackle. Devin Ryan off his hurdy. Devin Ryan from almost an impossible angle gets his sixth points to go with the goal he got in the first half. And Devin Ryan with two monstrous points has Cashel two in the lead. There's a strike off the ball there. And uh, Devin Ryan has gone down. The nearest man to him was Jack Murphy. Big reaction from the crowd. Not sure if any of the umpires or linesmen saw it. We were all kind of looking down the field. Michael Kendi having a word with his linesman. And uh, some of the Cashel officials over there yeah. having a word as well. There, there was a bit of a slap. I could hear something, Ken. I didn't see anything, but I could hear yeah, something. Yeah, Devin has this habit of... Uh, hitting the player's shoulder after scoring, uh, you know, on his opponent. And obviously the opponent uh, pulled back. Uh, so I don't think Kevin Jordan saw it. Yeah, uh, he, Michael Kendi, yeah, he's having a word there with the uh, fourth, official. fourth official. So so what's going to happen here? This could be uh, detrimental now for Carrick Swan as uh, Devin Ryan has got two great points and now he's got a little bit of a dig. So Michael Kendi's had a word with his fourth official there. And uh, he's coming in the field and he's calling for the Carrick Swan man, Ken. There's a card coming. What colour is it going to be? It's for number four, Jack Murphy. And it's a straight red card for Jack Murphy. Incredible on the 48th minute of the game. Carrick Swan reduced down to 14. Just a moment of madness in the Carrick Swan. Uh, management not happy with the fourth official. And... Uh, I'm not sure, Ken, can he have much complaints? I didn't see it myself, but play is going to continue. Out comes James Cummins with the ball for Cashel. Cashel starting to believe now that today is the day they return to the Senior Hurland Championship. But let's see what happens in these last 12 minutes plus injury time. Carrick Swan working the ball out of their full back line. They're going to have to rejig things back there, and they're going to need something to happen. It's Colin Luckman out struggling to keep that ball in his possession. Good play back there by number two, Dean Kiley. Plays it back now to the full-back position where Gavin O'Halloran plays it forward towards his younger brother Aaron. And here's Kieran Lonergan now. 25 yards out from his own goals. The goalkeeper launches this one long. He's looking for Danny O'Hanlon in the full forward line. It off the hand of O'Hanlon. Breaks down towards Conor O'Dwyer. He breaks through a couple of tackles. Flicks it forward towards Paddy Fahey. Fahey drills it long now looking for young David McGrath. It's way over his head though. And it might go the whole way. It is going to stay in play though. And uh, Aaron O'Halloran has it now. Cuts one way, cuts the other. Plays it to his older brother Gavin. Gavin now back to the cornerback. That's number two, Dean Kiley. 
Kylie coming out with this ball on the edge of his own D, flicks it forward halfway between the two 65s, and it's into the possession now of Taylor Fleming. Runs into a tackle, puts it onto his hurley. Good play from him as he flicks it forward, but it's cut out there by Kyle Quinn. And Paddy Faddy tries to let fly on the ball. He was about two foot over the ball, missed everything. And away comes Cashel momentarily, but Aaron Dunn has won it back. He's flicking it forward now towards Danny O'Hanlon. He's out in front of his man, turns one way, turns the other. Danny O'Hanlon looking for a big score for the Swan. Yeah, and Danny O'Hanlon, of course, he's got it. A big score now, and that's his first since been introduced as a substitute. And uh, with ten and a half minutes gone, we're back to a one-score game. Back to a one-score game, and uh, all to play for. Puck out goes long, really well placed from uh, number or the goalkeeper Johnny Walsh, who was straight into the hands of Anthony Walsh, but he decides to go with the hurley instead of the hand, and now Carrick Swan have cleared it long in over the head of Danny O'Hanlon. Con Bonner is back there for Cashel facing his own goals and he spins well and plays it forward towards Ross Bonner here's Ross in his own 45 flicks it down the field there's acres of space now for Anthony Walsh out on the sideline 45 yards from goals hits it high strikes it well strikes it over the bar massive score for Anthony Walsh his first of the day and Cash will go back into a two point lead with nine and a half minutes to go here yeah and every point is critical now and that's a wonderful score from Anthony Walsh you know a young hurler um, he really uh, nailed that one you could see him lifting the fist of the crowd Carrick Swan need a bit of inspiration now Kieran Lonergan down in the Kalinan end goals with the white goalkeeper jersey going to be striking this off his right hand side left hand on top hurler he drives this long he's looking for a group of players including Eric O'Halloran and Callum Lanigan and Dean Waters but it's Owen Connolly who comes out with this ball again plays it short now to Devin Ryan Devin Ryan breaks the tackle plays it to Ronan Connolly Ronan Connolly floats on with his left is it going to come in enough Yes, it is. Ronan Connolly fires over his first score today. And now Cashel in a three-point lead, 2-12, playing 15 points here in FBD Semple Stadium. Yeah, and that's the first time we've seen him playing with a bit of swagger, Paul. You know, beautiful passing movement between Ryan Connolly and Ronan Connolly. Eventually, great score. Puck out goes short now to the wing back. Colin Luckman puts it down in his hurley. Comes in field. He's running into a bit of trouble though, but he breaks through a load of tackles. A great run now from Luckman. He needs support. He has Callum Lanigan there. Flicks it off to Lanigan. Lanigan does really well to get his touch. He's fouled there by Connor O'Dwyer, and it is going to be a free in, but fair play there to number five, Colin Luckman, from 145 to the other, Super really run. driving his team forward. That's what you call a rally and run and a rally and call to the troops to say, we're still in this. It all is not lost. We can still go for it. And it's like there's a good 10 minutes left in the game, Paul. So uh, Kevin, or Callum Lanigan, will, will nail this, I presume. Yeah, and uh, he's outside the edge of the D, central position, looking for what would be his 11th point of the game. Number 11 on his back in the black jersey with the black helmet. And he strikes this high and accurately over the bar. 11 on the day for Lanigan. Back to a two-point game. We 52 minutes, 12 seconds gone in FBD Central Stadium. Massive last 10 minutes of action. Who's going to be lifting the Seamus Arena Cup? Who's going to be playing Senior Hurling next year? Who's going to be playing in the Munster Intermediate Club Hurling Championship? We've 10 minutes to find out. Here's young Kieran O'Dwyer now. Breaks a couple of tackles and trying to hit it down the line. Hits it. Finds James Cummins, his captain. Cummins just turns and hits it in over the top. And it might favour Oshin O'Donoghue. Out in front of his man, but again defending back there well is Dean Kiley. And back there as well is Scott Hogan. Plays it back to his goalkeeper, Kieran Lonergan. He opens up the shoulders, but oh. drives it straight towards the spare man. That's Conor O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer now going to have a goal from distance inside his own 65. Conor O'Dwyer says, thank you very much, Kieran Lonergan. How about this? And drives it over the bar from distance. And it's a three-point lead for Cashel again with seven minutes to go. Monstrous score from Conor O'Dwyer. And Conor O'Dwyer has been excellent all through there. You know, very solid at the back. Puck out now going long from Kieran Lonergan. Looking for Eric O'Halloran. Breaks off his hand towards James Cummins. Cummins now working back towards his own goals. His pass though is half blocked down and it could open up for Callum Lanigan. Ball on his hurley up to the 21. Shoots for the point and it's just going to skirt wide. He was free. hit late though and it is going to be a free in. I think it was a desperation kind of block from James Cummins and it is going to be a free in. So Carrick Swan are not going to leave this possession with nothing it seems like. They're going to have a chance for young Callum Lanigan to do it again. It's not over yet, Kent. Not over. Definitely not. Six and a half to go. 16 points for Carrick Swan. 213 for Cashel King Cormacks. Cashel looking to get back up into senior hurling. They're going to have to see out this window. Callum Lanigan, 21 yards out. Bit of an angle. Lifts, strikes high and fires it over the bar. His 12th keeps Carrick Swan in touch. Two points in it. 17 
points playing 2-13 54 minutes 5 seconds gone in FBD Semple Stadium we're set up for a grandstand finish big crowd here watching on as Johnny Walsh goes short with the puck out to Nathan Ryan he plays it short again to Conor Dwyer on his own 45 drills it long into the full forward line batted down again Dean Kiley has roared into this game coming out with this ball hand pass the chart to Aaron Dunn Dunn now cuts one way cuts the other on his left looking down the line towards young Callum Walsh he's out in front of his man but Con Bonner does well to just knock it off his hurley and Owen Connolly is there to clean up he finds his younger brother Ronan Ronan now plays a chart towards his Tipperary under 20 teammate Oshino Donahue. he breaks a tackle he's going to shoot from distance he's half blocked down he's going to land dangerously in towards the goalkeeper Kieran Lonergan and under the pressure of David McGrath coming in he says I will just let that roll out wide and take this puck out instead. Would you have played that one, Paul? No, let leave that one off. <laughs> <laughs> the way David McGraw was bearing down on him, so he leaves it off. Puck out goes long. Looking for Dean Waters, and he's fouled and lands on the ground hard. And now Callum Lanigan is going to have the chance to reduce it to one, Ken, as we have number 19 below is warming up. That's Adrian Cummins. Scored a goal in extra time against Upper Church last time, but here's Callum Lanigan. Arguably his biggest free of the day so far. We're down into the last five minutes. This Seamus Arena Cup final is still very much up for grabs. Two points in it as Carrick Swan look to make it a one-point game. Pressure fee here, Paul Lanigan. Outside the 45, he's not struck it well at all, and it's well wide from Callum Lanigan. First wide of the day. And his first mistake of the day, in fairness to the young man. He's been so, so good so far today. And uh, just didn't strike that right. So Cash will get away with it there. His puck out goes short towards Con Bonner over on that far side of the field. Number two on his back with the red sleeves goes along towards Ross Bonner. And uh, his opposite number two over there is Dean Kiley and Aaron O'Halloran. And Aaron O'Halloran has got that ball flicked off his hurley by Oshin O'Donoghue. And now James Cummins cuts one way out in the sideline. Cuts in field, gets it off to Paddy Fahey. Fahey now trying to open up a bit of space. Has a nice clever ball in front of Oshin O'Donoghue. He's inside the 14 but at an angle. Hand passes it in field towards Davy McGrath. McGrath fires it over the bar from close range for his first score of the game. And that's a big one now for Cashel as they extend the lead out to 14 playing 17. And now we're going to have a couple of substitutions coming on. It looks like Cashel off comes number 15. Ross Bonner coming off. On comes number 19, Adrian Cummins. And Ger Brown also warming up. Not sure if he's going to come on just yet. But on comes Adrian Cummins, the older brother of the captain, James Cummins. And let's see, can he make an impact on this game like he did the last day when he got that goal against Supper Yeah, Church? Ross Bonner, two critical points at, you know, at different stages of the game. So he did very well. So off he goes, Ross Bonner, 319 for this championship is what he's accounted for so far. His team lead by three. Ronan Connolly on that ball now, playing it to Adrian Cummins. He has the hurley pulled out of his hands yeah. and straight away Adrian Cummins has had an impact. He wins that free. He was out in front of Dean Kiley and the ball broke in behind the two of them and he had the turn on Kiley and he just pulled the hurley out of his hands and it is going to be a free in now for Devin Ryan and this is a big one to make it a two-score game. Yeah, 57 this, minutes gone. This is an important free for Devon. <laughs> right out I, the sideline. I, I suppose it has been a tale of the two 11s, uh, to be true, truthful, Paul. Uh, Callum Lanigan on one side, absolutely outstanding. And Devon Ryan, who literally single-handedly has kept Cashel in the game with his free taking and also his, 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 his vital scores in play. Yeah, that goal was a big one in the first half from Devon Ryan. But this is a big free right out in the sideline inside the 45. He strikes it high. Umpires having a look. And that's a big time free from Devon Ryan as he fires his team four points in the lead. We're going to have a substitution. Ger Brown been introduced, the former Tipperary senior hurler has been injured for many parts of this year, had elbow surgery, but now he's onto the field for this Seamus Arene Cup final. Cashel is starting to believe now. 2-15, playing 17 points, exactly 58 minutes gone. Kieran Lonergan, goalkeeper for the Swan, goes along with this puck out, in over the head of Owen Connolly. Callum Lanigan trying to get it. It's the captain, though, James Cummins, who has it. Here's Ger Brown, out on the sideline, off balance from a mile away, fires it over the bar. What a score from Ger Brown. And now Cashel, five points to the good, with a minute and a half to go, Ken, what a score from Ger Brown. Uh, he can do those things, you know. What a score. And a brilliant win from, from Jamie Cummins as well. A brilliant take there and a brilliant win by uh, Gavin O'Halloran. Won that puck out, was fouled by Paddy Fahey. And it looks like he's already thinking lobbed this ball in and he's drilled it towards the crossbar. It's going to have too much length on it and it's caught there on the end line by Conor O'Dwyer. Brilliant fielding by him. And he spots a lovely out ball towards Devin Ryan. Devin Ryan now spots the run in midfield of Oshin O'Donoghue who just loses his footing and now it opens up for Taylor Fleming. He might have a go. He's going to drill it into the full forward line looking for the run but again it's Conor O'Dwyer back there. Hand pass it short to Cahill Quinn. 
Carl Quinn surveying his options down the field. Looking for Ger Brown again in over his head towards Adrian Cummins. Adrian Cummins off his left. That's not going to curl in. It stays wide. A minute of normal time to go. 17 points for Carrick Swan. 2-16 for Cashel King Cormacs. It's a five-point game. Swan need goals at this stage. Puck out going long from Kieran Lonergan. He's looking for the captain, Eric O'Halloran. Up with the hand he goes. It breaks down now towards Gavin O'Halloran. And he flicks it infield towards Aaron Dunn. And Aaron Dunn has it caught in front of his man. And he almost has the jersey pulled off from there by Conor O'Dwyer. Conor O'Dwyer was making one thing sure. And that was that Aaron Dunn was not going to be able to get away from him. He's going to go into the book, Ken, but he won't mind that whatsoever. Yeah, that's where the black card should be introduced to club. You, you, you can't have a situation where you have it in club or county or and nothing back. I mean, that was a totally cynical foul uh, from that point of view. Um, I suppose... We might have a goal opportunity might have here, a goal though, opportunity just as we for, for young Gavin O'Halloran, O'Halloran inside the D. He's going to strike it. He's going to strike it high over, over the bar. bar. So his first score down to a four-point game. Ken, three additional minutes to come. If you're thinking man of the match at this stage, Ken, who are you going with? Well, we have two on the Cashel side. We have Conor O'Dwyer out through the outstanding at centre-back. And we have 11, Devin Ryan. Uh, brilliant all through. And, of course, we have uh, Callum Lanigan on the Carrick Swan side. 12 brilliant points from play. Um, Puck out go long. It just breaks off towards Oshin O'Donoghue now. And uh, breaks off him. And uh, breaks off Oshin O'Donoghue. And he's still on trying to win that ball. As is Devin Ryan. Devin Ryan has won it. He hand-passed it forward. And uh, it's going to be a goal chance here for... David McGrath is going to go for the point from distance off his left hand side and it's high, is it going to creep in? Yes it is from David McGrath a huge score, the Carrick Swan crowd think this is wide, they're running to the linesman but it could be a little too late now that one was just hanging in the air Ken, I'm not sure if you had a good view of it, I think it might have just crept in. I think it just crept in to be fair to, uh, to David McGrath to, to some score, to be fair to him at this stage of the game and now Carrick are down by five points once more. 18 points playing 2.17. 61 minutes gone. We're going to have three additional minutes. It looks like Simon Delaney ready to come on for Cashel down below us. And uh, referee Michael Kendi just uh, has play stopped momentarily. I think, does he want the puck out to be taken? Yeah, he does. Okay, so that's that substitute is going to have to wait. Puck out goes long, central. Carrick Swan down by five points Cashel in the lead and Paddy Faye with an important block and he tells Devin Ryan to get out of my way I'm going on a run and he breaks through a couple of tackles but Aaron Dunn has been working so hard for the Swan and he wins that ball back but Anthony Walsh is intercepting it brilliantly flicks it down the line looking for Ger Brown and Ger Brown has a touch and he just shouldered out over the line over there and it is going to be a line ball out for Carrick Swan and they need to get things going and get things going quick because they're very much in the last chance saloon now 62 minutes gone 18 points for Carrick Swan, 217 for Cashel King Cormacs. Aaron O'Halloran taking this line ball over on that far side of the field. And now we're going to have the substitution. Simon Delaney been introduced. He's coming on for Anthony Walsh. Anthony Walsh leaves this game with a big point he got moments ago. And here's Simon Delaney coming on now for him. Cashel now just moments away from a return to senior hurling. They've youngsters lined up on the uh, barriers ready to jump it their substitutes are all standing down by the dugout they think they're just moments away now but Carrick Swan still on the attack long ball fielded brilliantly by Danny O'Hanlon it breaks towards Eric O'Halloran he kicks it down through kicks it through and it's going to be cleared back there by Nathan Ryan good full back play as it's still going to be in possession now of Ben Mulcair he's going to lob it in around the edge of the square once more a diagonal ball almost touched brilliantly and it is going to be in the possession of Callum Lanigan he's trying to open up space there's so many bodies back there and Oshin O'Donoghue is doing well to defend him Lanigan working hard though he's won himself a free and it's just going to be lob it in and see what happens and Lanigan is going to lob it in straight away he's going to shoot himself and he's going to shoot it high uh, just over the crossbar and over the bar for his 13th point of the day but Ken We've played the three additional minutes. All eyes on referee Michael Kendi now. He has a look at his watch. Yeah, two outstanding teams uh, worked the bone. That critical goal from Owen Connolly. Devin Ryan outstanding. I think we've we've nominated him as our man of the match. Callum Lanigan a close contender. Connor Dwyer a close contender. And full time, Cashel King Cormux are the county premier intermediate hurling champions. They will be a senior team in 2025. They've beaten Carrick Swan 217 to 19 points. What an entertaining game of hurling here in Semple Stadium. A pitch invasion has ensued. And there's hugs between Ronan Connolly and his father TJ. 
They have helped bring Cashel back to senior championship hurling. They're the premier intermediate champions for 2024. They were down by three points at half time. They got that big goal, a fortunate goal from a distance from Owen Connolly. And then the red card on 48 minutes for Carrick Swans. Jack Murphy made things very difficult. But in fairness, Ken, to Cashel King Cormacs, they've come through the hard way. They were West champions. They only finished third in their group. But they managed to come through a preliminary quarterfinal, a quarterfinal, a semi-final after extra time. And now they've won the final. And Cashel King Cormacs are going to be in the Danbrain Championship next year. Yeah, and they are fully uh, deserving of that. They've been knocking on the door for a number of years now. Uh, TJ Connolly, a proud manager and a proud father today. Uh, wonderful work from his two sons, but wonderful work overall from that casual panel. Jerry Brown coming in. Um, Adrian Cummins coming in, contributing in a big way. Super scores. And, of course, Anthony Walsh, the young guy, scored the point as well. So, I think... Uh, the big break of the game, of course, was the long-range free when things were very desperate for, for Cashel and Owen Connolly being the great striker he is all the way. Um, it just caught the, the goalkeeper and the centre-back unawares and flowed into the coordinate. Absolutely sh- shocked with what happened. But I suppose that's what wins games, you know. Some cruel act of fate in a, in a, in a final. Uh, straight red also for... Uh, Straight red also for um, Jack Murphy. Jack Murphy, unfortunate at the time. Devin had scored a brilliant point, came back out, gave him a nudge, and obviously he must have pulled back. So um, that's disappointing. I was really impressed with Carrick Swans. I think, you know, they scored 19 points, should have scored about 25, I suppose. Yeah. To be true, truthful about it. But to be fair to Cashel, uh, they rang the changes, but the post, I suppose the most important thing from their point of view is to finish strong, to finish as champions. and Today is Cashel's Day, a big day for them. Yeah, and uh, not only are they going to be walking up the steps of the Arena stand to lift the Seamus Arena Cup for the first time in the club's history, they're also going to be representing Tipperary in the Munster Intermediate Hurling Championship. They will play the Limerick Champions, which are either going to be Newcastle West or Gary Spillane, and that will be on November 3rd. So they have a few weeks to soak this up and enjoy it. There's great scenes out on the field, and uh, you do feel for those Carrick Swan players over there. And uh, just... Uh, uh, that's us, you know, like, uh, Owen Connolly, I should say, going over to the Carrick Swan players there. Owen Connolly, massive performance from him today. Uh, got the 1 1, and uh, that free that he got that ended up in the back of the net was a very much a key moment in this game. But a bit of class there from Owen Connolly as well, just going over to all the Carrick Swan players as uh, all his parish in town are at the other side of the field in celebra- celebratory mode. But really entertaining game of hurling, Ken. And, Carrick Swan have had a fine year South Champions got all the way to the final they'll be disappointed maybe the breaks maybe just didn't go their way in terms of missed a few wides had that red card and that unfortunate goal finds its way into the back of the net but for Cashel they won't mind too much and uh, James Cummins is going to be lifting the Seamus Arena Cup Yeah it's hard to win finals um, Paul we all know that hard to get over the line and uh, a cruel act of fate there for Carrick Swans in the second half but to be fair to Cashel they kept ahead, they kept going ahead. They have good leaders in Owen Connolly, Devin Ryan, uh, Paddy Fahey, yeah. Jamie Cummins, the captain, and uh, goalkeeper also, you know, um, Johnny Walsh has got to be complimented. A cool, a cool card in the goals. Handled the ball very well, puck outs very good. And they finished like champions. They, did because start, they didn't start the game well, but they did finish like champions. Yeah, because at halftime we were saying that it didn't really feel like Cashel were hurling. They should have been maybe more than three points down at half time. But in fairness to them, they, they found a way in that second half. They found a way, and you have to find a way. It's as simple as that, you know. Danny Hannon was introduced. It looked like he was going to have a big sway in the game. He got one great score. But um, goals win matches. It's the old cliche. And the goal in the first half from Devin Ryan, and then the goal... Uh, in the second half the fortunate one from was the difference overall um, Cashel have been knocking on the door for quite a while Carrick Swans will come again they're youthful they're fast they're athletic uh, if Kieran Reid keeps uh, these guys going and Callum and, Lanigan what a performance from him and 13 those guys, points yeah and those guys young fellas you know you have to lose one to win one we always say that they will come again they're a very strong outfit and they will be comfortable uh playing in Dan Breen Hurling in a number of years they're a very progressive club now with their own facilities so my hats are off to Carrick Swans they're a proud club I think they're going in the right direction disappointment today but Cashel at the end finished the stronger and uh, you know they've had their heartbreak as well so 
Uh, well done to Cashel Kilcoyle. Yeah, Cashel with semi-final defeats in recent years and quarter-final defeats beaten by Ken Zalora in recent years as well in that semi-final and now here they are it's finally their day as they walk up the steps of the arena stand and uh, their captain James Cummins greets a jubilant Cashel Kincormux uh, supporter base over there in that far side of the field. It's a proud day for Cashel Kincormux. They're back into the Senior Hurling Championship and Ken, a nice age profile of their team as well that they'll feel they'll be able to go up to the senior grade now and maybe develop as the years go on. Yeah, without a doubt. I'm sure they have the, they have the backroom team. They have the talent. They have a lot of players coming through. Cashel's a proud Hurling territory, I suppose, you know, controversially, the advent of the Nocavilla Four, as we call them, that came in, all fine players in their own rights, yeah. you know, and Nathan Ryan, Devin Ryan, uh, Gerard Brown contributed in a big way when he came in and got that unbelievable point to, to bring them home. Mm. Aaron Brown, a sub goalkeeper, a very able uh, deputy to, to uh, Johnny Wall. So, um, I suppose, at this stage, to break that duck. You know, and go up to senior hurling. I think they have the pedigree and they have the, uh, the ability to, to to stand tall with the rest of the play- senior teams. So it was a question coming in here today. Would it be a, Will there be two South senior teams next year or two West senior teams? It is the men from the West who progress, and it is Cashel King Cormacs who lift the Seamus Arena Cup. Many thanks to our sponsors, Martin O'Dwyer Family Butchers on Friar Street and Cashel. I'm sure they're delighted with this result, and uh, why wouldn't they be? Cashel are the Seamus Arena Cup champions. Many thanks to Ken Hogan for his co-commentary duties here and uh, we will be back don't worry at quarter to four for the throw-in of Lockmore Castellani against Tumi Vara in the senior final but uh, from the Premier Intermediate final it is Cashel King Cormacs who are county champions they've beaten Carrick Swan full-time score here in FBD Semple Stadium Cashel King Cormacs 217 Carrick Swan 19 points we'll head back to you Davin for half an hour or so and then we'll head back to the senior final but today is Cashel King Cormacs day